immediately within seconds you got a brand new platformer you got hazards you got health you got cubes you can pick up but that's pretty standard stuff why don't we drop in some crates that we can interact with so let's just go game object cube all we need to do with this is uh, add a rigid body and then boom you got your physics player pushing these boxes around like naturally it's kind of hard to see because there's no textures and anything but if you wanted this kind of dynamic interaction with the like physical environment you in traditional games you need to like spend ages programming that yourself um, but in this kit everything just works straight out of the box I mean if you want we can actually just add let's add this material just to make it clear whoops I just made that red alright well okay don't worry about that we can make one of these boxes a hazard I think I haven't tried it hazard and, and you see it automatically gives it a deal damage script collision enter I mean if it was a trigger we'd change it to trigger enter you can look the stuff up in the guidebooks very very obvious so if we hit play now we've got like a dynamic hazard oh and we hit it and it pushed us away but you know if that was blocking our path in the game maybe we would use other blocks to sort of push it out of the way Oh. Hit by it, yeah. Or, if you wanted that to be sort of like a bomb, which only hurts enemies, you could obviously just click on it, go into affected tags, these are the tags which are affected by that hazard, and just type in enemy, and then the player would be able to push it without being hurt. Let's change the tag that's affected to enemy. And let's create an enemy. Okay, I cut the video there because I rambled for a bit. And, you know, I don't want to waste your time, so I just cut it out. So, I've added a point light here so that we can more easily gauge distance. Because it looked a bit weird, I only have one light. As you can see, you can't tell. But now you can tell distance. Um, we have just made a dynamic hazard. And we changed the only tag it's going to affect as enemy. Well, what if we want our player to pick up and throw this? All you have to do is go into tag, and if you want him to be able to pick up and throw it, make it pick up. If you want him to be able to push and pull it around, make it pushable. So we'll just hit pick up. And the really cool thing about this is, because it's using Unity's rigid body system, you can do this with anything. <laughs> You can, it can be a moving object if you've played the demo. You know, a lift can move up and down, and the player can hold onto it and it can pull him along. Uh, imagine if it's like a train, and he jumps and he grabs onto the train that carries him through the level. It could be, um, it could be a rotating pendulum that he has to grab onto. You can use other unity physics joints like a bouncy ball that he grabs onto and it bounces him in the air there's so many things i haven't messed around with everything but i mean that's it's really cool to see other people messing around with it and have them post it in the support forum anyway so we've got a dynamic hazard here now we can pick it up but we just need to give our player the throwing script because right now it's it can move and it's got health but can it throw not yet. So we've got the throwing script here. Let's just drag it onto our player. And as usual, it just sets everything up. It's probably going to want an animator because it's supposed to animate. And it's probably going to throw an error for that. But, you know, for now, I don't want to go into animations just yet. So it's just a beginner's video. So let's just not worry about that. So if I hit play, Yep, it's saying we, we need an animator, don't worry about it. And it's set up all these things. No grab box assigned on the throwing script, so one's been created for you. 
if we go into player now, it's got um, this new object which has been created, which is a trigger called grab box. And basically all this is, is anything which is within this trigger, we can grab it. So if you wanted, you could obviously change where your player's hands can reach to, you know. <coughs> okay. So our player's moving around, we've got coins. We can hit J and pick up this box. The reason it's quite far above his head is um, if we go into player and we go into the throwing script. We've got something here which is the gap, and the gap we've got right now is 0.5. Yeah, I mean, you can see that box is one unit, and that gap is 0.5 above his head. So we, we can pick up this bomb, and we can press J and throw it. And, uh, you know, we can change the throw force. Right now he throws it kind of, you know, 5 in the upwards direction, and 7 in just the Z direction. But what if we just wanted him to throw it, like, pretty high? <laughs> well, he's going to throw it 7 in Y and nothing in Z now. Like a bit of an idiot. <laughs> and, again, because it's completely dynamic, you can, you know, execute the throw whenever you want. And uh, that box will still be affected by physics. So it's weighing our player down. You can actually adjust that with weight change, so you can have a really heavy object, but when the player picks it up, he can move around really easily with it. Uh, on slopes, it's going to make us heavier, give us more momentum. Everything you can imagine, it, it works intuitively like that. So let's just throw this one again. Let's restore those settings. Five, seven, actually it doesn't matter. All right. So. This box is going to hurt enemies, and now we can pick it up and throw it. You can imagine if, if for example, we had an object which was a door, we could set, we can make this a key, and set it so that it only affects doors, and then we would just drop a health script onto the door, and then our player could like push a key into the door or throw a key at the door. The uses are, you know. There's so many things you can do. <laughs> I can't wait to make later videos because I've got some crazy ideas with how to combine all these elements to create like some really original gameplay. And the thing is, you need no scripting for this. It's like just drag and drop and play. And that's the whole thing I find fun about game development. And that's, uh, that's why I've taken this attitude when I'm making this kit. So, we can throw this. Let's make an enemy just create a cube. The funny thing is if you've seen uh, platformer tutorials online they will go over like pff, 10 videos in a series and tell you how to program everything. It takes hours. I mean this video is going a bit over time. It's probably going to be about half hour I guess but you could set this up in five minutes. And because it's so dynamic yeah you can do whatever you want. Okay. Alright, we've got the material for the enemy here. Drop them on. So, we want our enemy to chase our player and attack him. We've got enemy AI here. We just need to drop it onto that cube. And now it's got the right scripts, it auto sets up, it's got the character motor like I was talking about before. And if it was a 2D game, you'd tick this side scroller box. But we've got all these things for our enemy as well. Ignore Y means that um, it doesn't chase in the Y direction. Basically, that means that it's a ground enemy, but if you untag that, you can have a flying enemy. Chase. Yep. Push force and height is how far it's going to push the player when it attacks them. I mean, imagine if you had a big cliff that you couldn't get across and you had like a bull enemy. You'd make the chase speed of the bull really high, like a high acceleration and you could make the push force really strong so the player actually needs to be hit by the ball and then it pushes the player across the gap this is just like off the top of my head things I can think of to do with these scripts but there's a hell of a lot to do I can't really get over it myself um, anyway bounce force is when you jump on the enemy's head where is it going to push you and speed limit is obviously how fast it can move 
Anyway, we got enemy AI. He doesn't have any health yet, so he's invincible. Let's drop a health script on him. And he's just got one health. If we click take impact damage, that means when he gets hit by something, it's going to hurt him a realistic amount. So if he gets hit by a heavy thing really fast, boom, it's a lot of damage. Uh, if he falls off a high ledge, he's going to get hurt. And if we click only rigid body impact, it means he only gets hurt by moving rigid bodies. So if he falls onto a static floor, he's fine. But if I throw a rigid body at him, it's going to hurt him. And, you know, we can make him respawn if we want. The impact filter tag, I talked about that before, I got that wrong. <laughs> Which was stupid. Um, all that means is, if we click take impact damage, he only takes impact damage off these tags. Okay, so we've got our enemy. He should chase the player. Let's hit play. I'm kind of winging this. So he's over here. And he's not moving. So let's see why that is. Enemy AI. Chase. Assign a trigger with trigger parent script attached to site bounds or enemy will not be able to see. That does make a lot of sense. Okay. So, let's make that enemy. Enemies have slightly more setup. And that is, we've got some things here. Site bounds, attack bounds, the animator, and a move to point script. This, again, is all explained in the guidebook. So let's just see what the hell site bounds are. Let's search for that. Site bounds. A trigger that represents the enemy's sight. This needs the trigger parent script attached to it. You can use the text to check array on the trigger parent script to filter what object the enemy will chase. So let's create a new object. It's a blank object. I hit Control shift n for that, but you can just... Um, go create empty and then let's actually let's not do that how far do we want this enemy to see let's create a sphere and let's make it a trigger and turn off the mesh so this is acting as the enemy's sight it's, it's very customizable in that you could use a cone for this that's why I did it with the uh, triggers actually. I'm starting to remember. You know, you can use a cone, you can use a different shape mesh, you can make the enemy only see above them, you can customize what they can see, and it's very visual too. Like if this was a number, you'd be like, how far can you see? But you can obviously just tweak it like this. So we've got sphere, and let's call this site. And we need to, what's it say? We need a trigger with trigger parent script attached. So let's go scripts and do trigger parent. And all this really is doing is sensing when objects come into this trigger and sending a signal to its parent. So if we parent this to our enemy, it's going to get anything that comes in and send a message to the enemy. And tags to check. Let's just make it chase one thing and make it chase player. A really cool thing about this is you can have certain enemies chase other things. So, you know, an enemy could chase an AI character, they could chase birds, they could chase whatever you want. So, now it's got sight, we go into the enemy script and we can assign the sight bounce. And then we just need to do the same thing for its attack bounce. Like, what area does the enemy have to enter to get attacked by this enemy? So I'm going to make a cube which is like slightly bigger than the enemy. Again, make it a trigger, turn off the renderer. Actually, let's keep the renderer on for just a second because I'm going to put it inside the enemy. But make it slightly bigger. I don't know if you can see that. I've made it slightly bigger than the enemy. What this means is when the enemy chases us, 
when this at, like attack let's call this attack area when this attack area hits our player it's essentially the same as a hazard it's gonna damage the player so let's turn off the mesh renderer parent it to our enemy it needs to have the trigger parent scripts and that needs to be the player so because it's so customizable you can have a completely different shaped attack bounds you can have it so it, you know it only attacks in front of him like that you can have it so you know if an enemy's got spikes on his head and you can't land on him like that's the attack area just the spikes on his head uh, and it really means that you can have like co complicated models and complicated enemies and you can do whatever you want with them so okay we got our attack area and we got a sight area and when the player enters those areas it's sending signals to the enemy to chase and attack so we just need to assign that attack area for the attack bounds and now that's everything it's told us to do so to assign a trigger assign a trigger so now it can see the enemy can see and it can also attack does it play so we're not in its sight yet if we move up to its sight it begins to chase us and if it hits us oh it's attacked us now where's he gone he's over there now okay so I can pick up this now remember we set it to only affect the enemy and when he comes near I can throw this box at him and oh it's killed him because he only had one health so how cool is that you've set up you've already got like a little puzzle a little boss and let's take it a step further let's imagine Oh, let me duplicate this floor and shrink it a bit let's imagine we've got a ledge up here and all our coins are actually up on this ledge well that's too high for us to jump up and we probably can't stack the boxes to get up there but maybe we can jump on the enemy's head if he is a little bit smaller and if we go into the enemy bounce force let's make it something like six oh let's make it fifteen so now we've got this boss enemy which is gonna attack us we've got one box we can use to kill it so if we hit play now we can jump on the enemy and it's going to spring us into the air you know we oh okay well we can collect those <laughs> but you know imagine we couldn't and now we have to jump on the enemy to get up to this area and i've actually programmed in subsequent bounces so if you know like in mario you jump on the first enemy you bounce a bit you jump on the second you bounce a bit more you jump on the third you bounce loads and you can customize that too um, I think that's in the player jump, player move script. Oh, who knows where that is? Okay. What are we gonna do next? Maybe this video's gone on for far too long. <laughs> um. All right. For enemies. Let's quickly make a let's quickly make a push pull box just so you know how to do it. Let's make this box a bit bigger. And just like the other one, you just go pushable. And then when we hit play, you'll be able to go up to this and uh, hold the grab button and pull it. And you know, use that to solve problems. an issue there. Cool, I think that's all I'm going to show because this video has gone way over length but I mean when you consider the amount of stuff we've covered that was not very long at all really. Alright, thanks for watching and uh, 
happy platforming. Cheers.